Once long ago on the island of Bara, there lived a young woman as fair and as fine as any who had ever lived. She dwelt with her father, and together they worked a small farm. But her father was old and not well. His strength was failing, and in fact, the farm was failing too, for it was impossible for the young woman to do everything by herself. Her friends were sympathetic, but there was little that they could offer in the way of help. They said, oh, if only you had a horse or a husband. <laughs> she always chuckled. She and her father didn't have enough money to buy a horse. And as for a husband, well, all of the young men of the village had gone off to war two years before and none had ever returned. Well, one day the young woman was walking home from the village to the farm. It was a warm day and it was a long walk and she was tired. But as she walked along the shore, she saw something or someone. There was a young man who was leaning against a rock and looking out at the water. And oh, he was handsome. She would have remembered if she'd ever seen him before. Dark curly hair, dark eyes, a dazzling smile. As she passed in front of him, he greeted her and she returned his greeting. And then with a gesture, he invited her to sit down next to him. As I said, it was a warm day and a long walk and he was very handsome. So she sat down and they began to talk and they talked and talked and talked for a while. And then they just sat silently looking out at the waves. And with the warm sun and the rhythm of the waves, they both drifted off to sleep. The young woman awoke first and, and, and she at first didn't know where she was or what she was doing there, but then she turned and Oh yes, it was that handsome young man. He was still asleep and in fact, he looked even more handsome asleep than he had awake. She reached out her hand to touch his cheek and then she froze because she saw around his neck there was a silver chain and caught in the links of the chain were strands of seaweed. And so she knew what that meant. That meant that he was a Kelpie. And knowing what she knew about Kelpies, she realized that it surely was his intent to lull her into confidence. And then he would drag her into the ocean and she would never be seen again. Well, in an instant, she made a, a decision and, and she lifted up that chain and she slipped it over his head and just like that, he changed into his other form, that of a horse, a very handsome horse, a very handsome black horse. And that gave her an idea. So she mounted the horse and rode back to the village and up on a hill where she came to the cottage of the spay wife. And when the spay wife opened her door and saw the last standing there with a horse at her side, she knew immediately what the situation was. And she said, have you come for advice? What do you wish? And the young woman said, can I keep him? I could certainly use the, the work of a horse around my small farm. Can I keep him? The spay wife considered for a few moments and then said, yes, you can. You can take him with you and keep him there for a year and a day. But at the end of that time, you must return him to his other form, for to keep him longer than that would be dangerous for both of you. Well, the lass agreed, and she took the Kelpie, the horse, home. Well, the next 12 months were wonderful. The horse proved to be strong and hardworking and tireless. And together, they cleared a field and plowed and planted and harvested, and the farm was saved. Every night after a long day of work, the lass would brush the sleek coat of that horse and would feed him as well as she fed herself. And then often she would just stay there for a time. She would talk to him, though she didn't expect a response. And then sometimes 
she would be silent, with her head next to his, as they breathed the same air. Well, in this way, a year passed, and the young woman knew that she needed to return the Kelpie to his other form. And so on that morning, she went with the horse back to the village and back to the cottage of the spay wife, for she wanted someone to be a witness of what she was about to do. The spay wife had seen them coming up the hill, and so she greeted them at the door. She turned to the lass and said, and so how has this been for you? Has that worked out well? She said, oh, it has worked out so well, far better than I could ever have imagined. The farm is saved, and it is because of the hard work of this horse. We have worked so hard together. He has been tireless and, well, it has been so good. I have become so fond of him that I am loath to leave him. But I know that it must be for his sake. And so I wish for you to witness what I am about to do. And so she took the silver chain and she slipped it back over his head. And just like that, the horse turned back into his form as a man. And then the spay wife looked at that Kelpie man and said, and how has it been for you? Oh, he said, I, I have never worked so hard, but I've never been treated so well. My service has been gladly given. And then the spay wife asked him an unexpected question. She said, and so if you could choose, would you choose to return to your form as a horse and go back into the waves? Or would you choose to remain in this form and marry the lass? Well, the Kelpie man considered for but a moment or two. And finally he said, if I could choose, if I can choose, then I would choose to remain in this form and marry the lass so that we never need to be parted. Well, so it was said and so it was done. They were married that very afternoon. And you can imagine the great surprise of the lass's father. His daughter had gone off that morning riding on a black horse and she returned in the evening with a dark haired young man whom she introduced as her husband. <laughs> Explanations were given, but they could scarcely be believed. But what could be believed was the affection between the two of them. And so it was that later that year, when the father became gravely ill and knew that his time in this life was short, he knew that he could leave with a sense of peace and satisfaction, knowing that his daughter and her husband would be well. And all was well for them. They worked hard and they loved much. And as the years passed, there were two children born to them, a son and a daughter. But as time passed, finally, the young man and the young lass became old themselves. And one year, when the lass, who had been young and was now old, became gravely ill and knew that her time on earth was short. Well, she slipped away one morning quietly. And shortly after that, the Kelpie man, he went to visit his children, to embrace them to tell them about their mother, to wish them well. They were grown now with families and lives of their own. And so that man, he walked down to the shore where he had first met his wife. And he stared for a few moments at the waves coming and going. And then he slipped the chain over his head and in the form of a horse once more he walked into the waves 
And that is the story of the maiden and the Kelpie.